Okay, here we are again. Pattern picks. Already did one video on pattern picks, and those pattern picks were pre-1950, or what we refer to the Golden Age. Uh, I'm uh, going to title this Pattern Picks 2, and I was hoping to have uh, all pattern picks after 1950, but the truth is there's probably some in here that are prior to 1950. Uh, however, most of them are post-1950, and uh, many of them from the 60s as well. So, pattern picks. Uh, it's just as described, it's kind of self-evident, but to give further definition, pattern fix picks do not involve tortoise shell, white, black, or mosaic picks, or any picks that are a solid color. They're simply picks with patterns. We're going to be looking at two different boards today, this and another one, for a total of 150 picks. Uh, we're going to be uh, taking a look at four dozen distinct patterns and variations of those patterns as well. Uh, we have three types of grips we're looking at, whole, cork, and sponge. And uh, so many shapes here, I just haven't counted them for this video. But I think the great thing about guitar pick collecting is uh, not necessarily in the minute details, which I obviously enjoy. But the first thing that struck me as a collector was their sheer beauty, just looking at them. And I know a number of people have written me back who have looked at the YouTube videos and mentioned how, how pretty the old picks are compared to what we have today. So, let's get right into it and start at what we're looking at. I'm going to start at the top center here with this pattern. Now, I would not know the date of this particular pattern, except for this pick here, this sponge grip. Very unique feature. Shows up in a 1967-68 Grossman Musical Instrument Wholesale Catalog, and they're selling sponge picks. I don't see sponge picks advertised at any other time except uh, during that period. So we can safely conclude that these uh, groups we see and pairs, we got pairs on either end, uh, and this nice group in here, are from the 1960s. Now here's a little detail uh, that kind of picks me, pun intended, is many of the shapes we see here are still coming from uh, hand punches. Uh, obviously, D'Andrea had automated uh, the 351 back in the 1930s to be machine stamped. But a number of these shapes could actually be found in the uh, 1947 catalog. Those shapes tended to vary, even though the uh, pick number assigned to them, catalog number uh, assigned to them, remained the same. There were variations of those shapes as punches were changed. But the punches seen here seem to be some of the older shapes that we do see in the 40s. So conceivably, this uh, group here could have been at the end of its cycle and started as early as the uh, late 1940s, continuing into the 60s. So we show uh, four different color sponges here, and I show them paired up here. As you can see, what I've done with the videos is I attempt to put them in groups, color groups. Uh, for larger collections, I recommend color groups as opposed to putting them in shapes. Smaller connect collections, you want to do them by shape, but as it grows over time, you want to see what picks are related to each other, and the best way to do that is by keeping the patterns all together. So we have this amazing pattern here, which I think is beautiful, as well as this here, this one here, this one here. We see all these zigzag shapes here. Here's the cream de menthe style, uh, which I've talked about before. Unusual here in that this is actually vinyl. It's that old uh, school vinyl. It's got a texture to it. Uh, unknown who made those. Don't believe it was DeAndrea. Up here we have numerous permutations on striped picks, which is amazing. And you could see in this case they chose to put the punch so the uh, uh, stripes would appear vertical and here horizontal. Uh, like I said, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven variations of stripes. We have some other variations over here of patterns. You can see these are singles. All, all singles from here and all through the bottom. By singles, I mean there's no other patch, a matched pick with it. As you can see, these all have matched shapes. Same pattern, but they're all matched together. We have smoky groups here. 
you take a look at that and a look at that. The smoky, flowing colors they have to them. Uh, here's another one, the 361, the trapezoid shape. Only seen one of those in all my years of collecting. And it just happened to be that one. Uh, other uh, notable distinctions here. We do have mother of pearl, as we could see here. Uh, wood grain here. This could be described as a wood grain here. But we're going to move on and take a look at uh, the second board. I chose to put these uh, picks on a black background because they seem to show up best on that background. But I'm going to go to a white background now. And hopefully the contrast uh, will be such that we can still see the details of this upcoming group right here. Which is uh, darker groups of picks. And I do believe they, they show up better uh, on a white background. But maybe not. So what I'm going to do is get a flashlight and just pan it across here. So you could see some of those colors. And uh, maybe we we'll even we we'll even try a close up there. That angle seems to be much better. Sorry about the lighting. This is a one man amateur operation going on here. But uh, my main desire was just to get them out, out imperfect as these videos may be there. So you get an idea of all those gorgeous little patterns in here. And uh, we have numerous wood styles, both in brown. In fact, I counted at least six different wood patterns uh, that are brown and six different wood patterns that are gray. We have a, uh, well, amongst us early collectors, a, a very popular style that we call the church glass celluloid made by D'Andrea, late 1960s. We know it's from the late 1960s simply because, let me get a flashlight behind those, uh, simply because there are a number of ad libs now you can see that much better. Look at all those colors in there. Wow. Very sweet. Uh, as I was saying, D'Andrea had ad lib sayings put on those picks. And we know the ad libs come out in 1968. Take a look at the various shapes here. Here we have a 359, a 347, 351, 358 and a half, 346, 352 and a half. Now, take a look at a little detail veering off the whole focus on patterns here, but these two shapes, they're the same type of shape but different sizes. And the larger one is the 347, and this is the uh, 352 and a half. Now, there was a time where there were variations on the 347, and this was called the 347 and three quarters. But now it's simply referred to as a Les Paul shape or the 347 and uh, three quarters for those that want to use the old numbering system. Let me do a few uh, more back shots here. This is one that's really got a nice pattern, and we know that's from the uh, 19, early 1970s, simply because Westminster Music, uh, which made pen picks, had a number of picks made with uh, their logo on it, on that particular type of celluloid. So I'm going to pad out one more time before we sign out here. So you could just see these different colors here. And I hope to hear from you if you have any comments. You know, you want to complain about the video, feel free. I don't like how the videos are either. But the point is you get to see some variations anyway. And in spite of the poor quality at times, it still gives you uh, enough insight into what's out there in the terms of pattern picks. Any more questions on pattern picks, please write me. Uh, right there in the description, you'll find my email address. So nice being with you again. This is Joe Macy signing out. Play more picks. Take care.